All right, guys, welcome back. This is ESO on Hamburg 2018. This is the NA main regional qualifiers, and we are in the final match that's going to determine who's getting into one of these slots. I'm Moxie. I'm here with D2 Bowie. We've got Hello. Complexity versus Pain X. And I have to admit, I thought it was going to be J Storm that was going to make it into here. This is a pairing that I don't think we've seen yet in this qualifier just yet. Indeed. Uh, I mean... Considering the first game, right, between uh, the first series between Pain X and J Storm, it was so dominant with G J Storm. And even then, Pain X takes it super fast with that 16 minute game that we uh, just ended <laughs> that up. That we waited for how long to oh cast? Okay. Let's, uh, let's put that behind us. That's true. This is a fresh new match, you know. Yeah. I know Pain X has been having a little bit of trouble, though. I believe Lelis has been having some ping issues. So hopefully, we won't have any issues with that this time around, yeah. and we're going to get a really good game. If you guys don't know, this is actually uh, Complexity. They do have a one-game advantage because mm -hmm. they were in the upper bracket. And, you know, Complexity Gaming, one of the few teams that actually pick Shadow Shaman. Yeah. And uh, I really like it. I think the hero, one of the few supports to really offer push, uh, you know, I, I guess in a magnitude that any other support offers. Uh, and they used to play this with DJ back in Fnatic when Eternal Envy was uh, was playing. So I think he's, he's like, guys, this, this hero is actually good. Well, Z Freak actually played this in Dream League quite a bit. Yeah, but that was that was when Envy was already there, right? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, I think he kind of skewed. Uh, he was like, Z Freak, you maybe you should play this hero. Because mm -hmm. even at TI, not a lot of teams were playing. And DJ was like owning, just winning games by himself with Shadow mm -hmm. And I think this is probably one of the... Uh, you could say one of the top three supports in terms of scalability and just impact in the late game. You know, Refresher Shard Shadow Shaman, just... Yeah, we've seen some really awesome plays with uh, this particular hero and having that Refresher, but... Uh, All right, there yep. is a hero uh, that really counters the Shadow Shaman, you know, he doesn't have that much AoE, the Eater Shock, not super good when the Phantom Lancer is farmed. So, interesting opener here, Phantom Lancer, you usually need to first phase the hero or else he's gonna get banned. And it's it's a decent it's a decent game, especially when you already have the meter wyvern. You're always gonna have like this hero is already hard to kill. When you pair it up with the code embrace, he's gonna be uh, unstoppable, especially uh, if yeah. he if he goes to the late game. In terms of bans, they're gonna take the alchemist out. Yeah, I'm surprised actually that we're not seeing the earthshaker get picked up. Right, that seems to be a hotly contested hero. Yeah. And it still could fit into these drafts pretty well too. So yeah, we did saw Pain X actually snatching in the second phase. Mm. Uh, I don't think. Considering the complexity games, and considering that this is most likely a position for Shadow Shaman, uh, Envy always, uh, almost always doesn't play Shadow Shaman, I don't think he's going to pick Shaker 5. Mm. Uh, but I could see it for Pain X. They did snatch it in the second phase, as I as I talked about. Actually, they're going to ban it. So. Okay. Well, that answers Both our Shaker question plus. right there, for sure, right? Yeah. All right. Well, there's no Earthshaker that's going to be picked up here. We've already seen that the Tiny's been taken out. Obviously, you don't want to let Limp get that hero. He has just been too good on that lately, and it's also one of his signatures. What do we see then? What else is going to be coming out with just what we see with this draft right now? Mm, I would like to see a hero that handles the Phantom Lancer. Um, there's not much that really deals with him anymore, though. That's like really in the yeah, the meta. especially in the mid lane because yeah. you know Alchemy is probably one of the few heroes that actually goes mid and builds Radiance. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Ember, another yeah, one, no. so they're going to yeah. take it down. Yep. And yeah, the list definitely goes down a little bit here. Uh, you can always try to, uh, you don't necessarily need to handle the Phantom Lancer if you have a very strong timing. So if your power spikes, they're all earlier into the game, you can always just like power through before the Phantom Lancer gets big enough. Okay, yeah. Which cool. could happen when you have like a Shadow Shaman, you can force, you know, tower after tower as long as you, you get uh, good engagements. Uh, but then you kind of need to draft accordingly and it's up to complexity to either decide to do that or pick, uh, I guess, a safe laner that deals with Phantom Lancer. And when the Terror Blade is al already banned, not, there's not a lot of options. So what are they going for here? Radiance heroes that are still up. Mm, I don't want to see a life Master there. is an option. Yeah, uh, Master. Yeah, he kind of, not only he, he can build Radiance afterwards, he, the Dispel, super strong versus mm -hmm. the Phantom Lancer. Um, besides that, there's not too many Radiance heroes that really kind of left in the pool right now or that are particularly great because the Alchemist yeah. was already taken out. Necrophos sometimes builds it, but he's already been taken yeah. out as well. Um, you know, the Brewmaster sometimes will build it 
life stealer sometimes will build it, but I, I just don't really like that hero, especially. Yeah, versus the Winter Rider. Yeah, no, it's so not a good much. idea. Just too much kiting. Too much kiting. Too much potential of actually being able to murder your own teammates. There are Battle Fury options, you know. The Oh, X is oh, there's <laughs> a soft counter, I would say. He can build the Crimson Guard, which mm -hmm. is a decent item. So that's most likely going to be Safeling Weaver. So that's what they're working uh, working with right now. It's gonna oh, wait. It could be the NVX, right? It could be the NVX. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Okay. So so he's not going to counter shit. <laughs> he, <laughs> he will barely get a Blink Dagger if, if this game goes well for complexity. So... Yeah, it doesn't... You do never know, though. You never know what we could see. Especially because the Phantom Lancer can't start with Doppel, so mm -hmm. the Battle Hunger spam is not even, you know, that strong versus mm -hmm. the Phantom Lancer. Uh, but yeah, I would like to see a switcheroo, actually. I would like to see an X-Core, I think. Okay. It's probably better than the X-5. You have to wait. Could be a Snay on that, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, there are battle free options. You know, the Jugger, it's decent with the Shadow Shaman. You do have a lot of kill potential with the mm -hmm. Shackles, uh, Blade Fury level 1. Monkey King is okay-ish, but also it, it's so hard to actually farm Battle Fury nowadays. Hmm, interesting. Okay, uh, very good versus Weaver. You can always sp spy Carapace the Sukuchi, so it's easy to to land the spy Carapace. Even X, you can spy Carapace the Spin. Uh, very easy to set up some kills uh, at this point. So they're gonna be a flea next assassin, do you think? I would prefer a Phantom. yes. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Nice. Battle free options. All right. There we go. There okay. we go, boys. And I, oh, when she gets level 20, the the, ta the Stifling Dagger talent is so good with Battle Fury. It's actually insane. Um, we're not sure if it's going to get to that point, but it's they're like, okay, if it actually goes late, we do have an answer mm -hmm. as long as you, you get a Battle Fury. Um, it, it usually takes some time if you don't win your lane, but considering, yeah, they're, they're yet to pick their offlaner. So let's see what Pangax goes for here. The Bat Rider is... I, I think Bat Rider is actually pretty decent here. Very good versus the Weavers, as nowadays they barely go Lincolns. Mm -hmm. Pretty good versus the Shadow, Shadow Shaman as well. Mm, and in the lane, you just... The, the PA, besides blinking away from the Bat Rider, there's not much the PA can do. Oh, we'll see. We'll see what they decide to pick up here. Man, that is not a hero I've seen much of. <laughs> yeah, like I think I really like PA. Probably one of my favorite heroes. So we're very excited by that. It's probably, it could be mid PA, but it's probably gonna be uh, Jail mm -hmm. Phantom Assassin. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they pick up for Lemp too, because it seems like we've been, you know, casting quite a bit of NA. But uh, watching Complexity the other day, actually, you know, the way that Lemp has been playing these mids has been absolutely like out of control. He's just been making so much space, getting so big, and allowing Jo just so much room to be able to do what he needs to get done. Shows up then, he's got plenty of farm, and they just start rolling tower after tower, taking really good fights. And even if the fights aren't super great, they do manage to find like a pickoff and kind of just get the momentum back going again. So, Admiral Tonka. Oh. All right. So is this going to be? An offlane Konka. I did so liquid playing it. I was not impressed, but uh, it, it is an option. It's also a hero in that game in particular. They actually went for like a very tanky Konka. They went Crimson Guard. So okay. I'm not sure if that's what uh, their plan here. Just get a Crimson Guard. So the PA. Not only you're already reducing the damage from the PA because of the boat. If you go Crimson Guard, it's a lot of damage reduction. It could be mid Konka. Uh, because maybe they feel like complexity sh uh, could go for the mid kanka to get even more AOE damage onto that PL, so they're just snatching it now. Mm -hmm. we just I don't think fl I haven't seen Fleet play a mid, uh, not mid, sorry, a position for kanka in quite a while, if I recall. Yeah, I, th I, I think, think that's I think this might be CCNC's kanka. Yeah, I, that's yeah, and that's then you I'm have like the support four Nyx with a support five Winter Wyvern. Yeah, I think you got to be careful though, right? Because you've got to have really good communication so you don't try to land a boat on top of a Winter's Curse or whatnot. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Some trust exercises between your your team there. Mm -hmm. And you know, Kanka, if the PA tries to blink away, you have that X. If the Weaver tries to get away, you have the X as well. Mm -hmm. So very, I guess you could say, reliable lockdown. That's true. Um, they also have a lot of setup. The Winter's Curse can set up the Impale, the Torrents, the Boats, as long as you, you know, time it correctly. Yes, absolutely. You must time uh, it correctly. But, I mean, these guys, they're not noobs. They got this. They know what they're doing. <laughs> That's true. Right? And they also take the Enigma huh? on the side of uh, complexity. I guess that's a lot of uh, kind of scary AoE that can come out if you can get them in place and get good positioning. Because, again, positioning very key. Yeah. 
very key in these fights. And usually the PA just, oh, I really like that they take the Monkey King out. Not only it's decent versus the P PL in general, mm -hmm. it kind of owns mid here. So that's definitely a mid Kanka. Okay. They took the, uh, the Monkey King down. ECNC mid Kanka. Alright, it's it's decent, you know. It counters Invoker. It counters a lot of uh, heroes that don't have a lot of uh, high base damage early mm -hmm. on. And now I guess I'm gonna pick their offlaner, unless this is offlane Nyx Assassin. We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> I do think there's probably gonna be Flea on the Nyx Assassin, though, if I had to guess. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Yeah. So which offlaner? I I would be okay with the Bat Rider. I think they're it's not really a lack initiation, but it's it's good. It's decent. If not, you could go for something like the... the undying wakes. We get the Undying pickup here. That's pretty good. It's going to give them some early presence, right? Okay. Uh, so, this is off lane uh, Nyx then? And they're probably going to play Wyvern as a 4. Right, so let's see. What are we going to pick up now for Limp? What is the Limp hero here? Hmm. <laughs> this is not going to be. This is not going to be easy because he doesn't really have a lot of good options. Like the Lina, uh, Lina versus Kunkka is not nice. Well, Lina versus a Nyx Assassin is not mm. very nice either, right? Yeah. Because you want to kind of sit back and, and allow yourself. To stay I'm going to say it again. I think Puck. <laughs> You're going to say Puck I again? Puck we have not seen a Puck yet today, You don't though. care about the Axe. Uh, the Nyx Assassin is definitely a problem, but besides the Nyx, I think this is a decent uh, Puck game. You know, we have AoE against the Piao. Uh, the Tiniest Band, right? So that's his staple most of the time. Um, whew, this is this is not his no Ember. Like, what do, you, what do you go for here? It's going to be an unconventional hero. You maybe. think we see something like a, a TA? Versus PL, it's. I mean, it's not great, obviously, but if you can get online before the PL. I don't know. Even the Kunkka just break the refraction so easily. You That's have true. the Undyne on top of it. So hard for the TH fight. Mm. I, I, they they might go for it, but. Oh. That's that's a. I, I really like this. That's oh. I like this draft. I like it this. Really enables the PA. Even the Weaver is gonna be happy. Um. Kind of hard to get the RPs going with the Tombstone, Wha but if whoa, 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 we need to talk about 4DR playing the Winter Wyvern bow. Oh, that is a Tavo. That is a Tavo special. I mean, it goes back to Ice Ice Ice, but right, like right. from the from the teams playing at TI, Tavo was the f I think he was the first one uh, playing offlane Winter Wyvern. So all right, oh, I like this. I'm excited. Huh? It does. You know, the Cold Embrace in that la in the lane versus the PA is pretty good. The Haraskus uh, with the W, uh, sorry, the Q is actually just so good. The W is good as well, but like yeah. the Arctic Burn just does so much damage. That's true. You have to be careful though, right? Because you do have, you know, Z Freak's going to be playing that. Shadow Shaman is going to be really aggressive, you know. It's going to be constantly trying to click people down and also, you know, getting any sort of good initiations, but. Yeah, another mm -hmm. thing is that Eternal Envy, like, uh, you're going to be against the X, right? And uh, X is position 5, he's probably going to be in the safe lane, which means you want an offlaner that can actually cancel the Battle Hunger as fast as right, possible. Right. And the W is very reliable, very uh, big cost range. Mm -hmm. So you can always get the CS and not take that much damage uh, from the Battle Hunger. Because it's actually very annoying lane. If you have a hero that doesn't really clear creep waves easily, the X just does so much. And, you know, he's just going to zone you back to your tower. Going to be a sad boy. But not in this case, I think. Flea playing the Nyx Assassin. I never noticed there's heads hanging off of Axe's belt. Did, have you noticed that? Huh, no, I never did. You know? Wow, yeah, that's pretty... That is creepy. <laughs> creepy, yeah. I've never noticed that. My goodness. All right. The day we learned... I do like the set over on Lullus. I really like that. Uh, well, it was from TI, right? The yeah. Under. One of the best ones from Yeah, TI, that's pretty cool. Limp with the helmet. Not sure how he fits that the horn there first. <laughs> no. It's Dota. Don't ask questions. Just roll with it. <laughs> Just roll with it. Why has Gyrocopter got a Bumblebee costume? You know, you just these are questions that we just probably don't want the answers to, anyways. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> All right. So. Are you kidding me? No, um, I really like the Magnus PA combination. I think. It's pretty strong, especially in a game like this. Maybe the PA doesn't even have to build Battle Fury, which is great. You know, I was like, okay, the PA is an answer, but that Battle Fury is going to take a, a long time to get online. If you just have the Magnus, pretty much don't care about it. You can go for uh, Battle Fury and the Empower, which is like even even stronger, mm. but you don't have to. Um, they do have the push with the Shadow Shaman. It, you know, it's looking pretty good. I, no I like Plexus Draft better, I would say. <laughs> 
Some <sighs> Pepe hands going around here. Sorry. Nah, uh, it's okay. I enjoy the bounce. <laughs> Was busy. They were busy. Do you see the invasion coming out though here? And then the taunts too. Oh, I love it. Kind of poke eternal envy just a little bit over here. Throw out some taunts. He's got four stacks of decay. He's feeling pretty good right now. PA kind of hiding out by her tower. Jo. Yeah, definitely one of the weaknesses of that hero. Not strong in lane early on. And they're actually going aggressive, right? Reach the positioning here uh, with Flea. I do like this. I do like this quite a bit, actually. Yeah, I think that's the right move uh, for the side of for the side of Phoenix. <laughs> what did you expect? <laughs> <laughs> All right, those runes getting snatched up here. Envy, uh, where are you going there, buddy? Just you know, enjoying some time in the river, having a little me time, right? Just being pesky. Yeah. All right, so. How does this mid-matchup work out, Bowie? Mm, I would say it's still it's still Kunkka favor just because uh, Magnus is melee, so he's going to take some Tidebringer damage. Mm -hmm. uh, but the first levels are probably going to be fine for Limp just because with the Empower that he skilled first, he's going to have a slight right-click advantage here over CCC. Mm. Bottom lane feels like it's going to be kind of a slugfest, although when you've got that Undying, right, he's going to be able to get quite a few stacks of Decay. Yeah. Which can cause a lot of problems over here. Envy throwing out that battle hunger, trying to really just kind of be pesky again, but Ritsu doesn't seem to mind too, too much. Two melee heroes. Yeah. Pretty easy for the Undying. Oh, again. 16 strength. 20, actually. Yes, he is a very strong boy over there. The top lane, you know, the, the Shadow Shaman, he actually has a lot of base damage. They don't really have a good pairing for the Shackle, so I like that he learns the Ether Shock. He just wants to right click and uh, do as much damage as possible. It's not like they have kill potential level 1. Mm. It's just gonna be booping for both sides. You know, that's enough, right? Yeah, it's okay. It's gonna enable the, the Weaver. And they do have an offlane Wyvern, you know, it's not the scariest hero ever. That's really kind of good for harass mostly, but. And the, you know, later on when that PA gets fat, if you get a good Winter's Curse, it's going to be so much damage for oh yeah, out. Absolutely. I wonder if the cleave... Oh. oh, top lane. Flea finds that opening, though, over onto Z Freak. So it might be just being a little too pesky over there. Okay. Yeah, I just wonder if the cleave works uh, uh, during the Winter's Curse, if you actually get it here. I think it doesn't. I'm almost sure it doesn't, but... If it does, it's even scarier. Envy's sitting very low down here. Well, let's just keeps constantly throwing out those stacks of decay. This mid just very quiet, right? Like trading pretty easily here. Thirteen and five over on Limp. Eleven and three over on Makunka. Yeah, it's a farm fast. Uh, I oh, buddy blocks. I don't know. Got some movement down here. Looks like CC and Z. Is he going to get taken down? He's so close to getting taken out. And he's not going to be able to do it. Although that little bit of cleave damage actually. Canceling out the salve. Oh, look at this limp. He really, really wants it. Does not have that shockwave just yet. He's going to pop oh. the salve. He wants to dive this tower. There it is. It There's the kill. And at the same time, Ritsu gets a kill on Eternal Envy in the bottom lane. It was such a good skewer back. The Kunkka just wanted to get the cleave. But limp. This guy, I mean, we've been talking about, we've been praising him quite a bit. And yeah. He keeps on delivering. Just great plays all around. It's really good judgment call skill. Yeah. In terms of CS, the PA doing fine actually. Most of the cores are complexity. The only hero uh, kind of challenging them right now is Ritsu. We've got the bottle picked up now over on the Magnus, so he's going to be able to spam just a little bit more here. Lela sitting a little low again. Does have that decay though. Eternal Envy is trying to harass him back. A little bit of harass coming out here, top lane, but nothing too crazy right now. Ritsu does get a little bullied down here. But like you said, he's just going to be able to double off that battle hunger. No problem. He's got himself quite a few stick charges as well. Yeah. So he's feeling pretty comfortable, I have a feeling. Just a little bit ahead of J.O. here down to the bottom lane, too. I do have a little bit of a rotation. Hastrin gets picked up. Will deny that rune from Limp. And while that goes on, we actually do get a kill. 
over with uh, Lelis getting taken down. Z-Freak just trying to harass 4DR. It's a pretty good play by Lelis, actually. He killed himself in that tower, so he can uh, go back to the... Uh, usually, what people will do is uh, just die to creeps, but you, you get the longer respawn timer, right? So by killing himself with the 40 r 40 r you're sitting solo. Look at his nay. Just goes in, gets that kill. All right. Bottom lane, Eternal Envy might be in for a little trouble. Ritsu over here, they get a couple helixes, but they just need maybe one more rush here. One more hit. Should be able to do the trick. Oh, Ritsu, though, sits very, very low. They get the kill over onto Envy, but Ritsu's in a lot of trouble here. Tumlo 7, he's jazing after him. He's got a dagger. They need just a little bit more damage, and he doesn't quite have that blink up just yet. Needs a little bit more time. Turns around, throws out that lance, and it looks like they'll actually back off here. Jayo not going to go for it. Oh, that Soul Rip doing a lot of damage, but Jayo has a salve on him. Will be able to back himself out. Oof. Okay, so Ritsu will probably shrine there. Feeling pretty good after that. I mean, Limp's already level 6 here. We might see some RP plays with the skewer back if possible. He's gonna try to cancel out CC and C stuff. He's been pretty good about that this entire time, using that to his advantage, using the. Uh, using that in power, of course. Rotation coming out over in the mid lane, though, looks like. Fully keeping an eye out. Probably wants to make sure that they can try to grab that rune away from Limp if possible. They've had pretty good rune control so far. Then be just taking a beating down here. Top lane. Oh, they're going for a dive. Snay chasing after 4DR. 4DR gonna go and use that Arctic Burn. Tries to get himself away. Still Snay hot on his tail. Does manage to find him. He's gonna try to duke him around here into the trees. He actually loses him, but finds him again over there by the tower. There's gonna be the healing salve coming out from 4DR. So he should actually be just fine. And Lola's actually gonna be able to get that rune control here away from Limp yet again. So that's gonna hurt him. Yeah. Uh, since he finally gets level 6, so a little bit harder for Limp to get the key with the rum buff. But uh, very dominant performance by Limp. Almost NCS ahead. Yeah, he's just been looking so good lately. This, this new roster for Complexity seems to be playing just really, really well together. Yeah, and they didn't have their carry player yet, I right? know, right? Because Jay has been standing in. It's very promising. Like you see Skem when he comes in here, right? Yeah. Top lane again, just trying to put as much pressure as they can over here on 4DR. They'll turn around. They do have that Arctic Burn. They'll turn and try to do it over here onto Z Freak. Let's slow him down just a little bit. Spike Carapace coming through. We'll slow them down just a little bit. Mid lane. Boat comes out, but Limp just skewers himself away. He says, I don't think so. Not right now. Bottom lane too. We've got some action. Looks like Eternal Envy trying to run himself away here. Jayo putting some pressure over onto Ritsu. Still looking fairly healthy, whereas Ritsu is having a little bit of trouble. Does have that uh, Doppel though up and running should he need it. Goes and pops that W. Okay, so very even laning stage, you know, three and three. Um, I do worry a little bit about uh, 4DR on this Wyvern. You know, it's I like what it does, but uh, you know, there's an offline Weaver on the other side. That hero will output a lot of damage, and I'm, I'm curious to see which items he's gonna go for. Uh, what what's their play in action? If he's gonna go for like initiation with the blink dagger, if it's gonna be some sort of like tanky build. No. And now he has the face boots queued up. He yeah. did some right click damage. And it looks like they actually for CC and C just going all the way home. He's gonna have to go grab those phase boots up. I'm still oh he has a double damage now, Bowie. Oof. Already level 8, so level 2 in power there. That PA, I mean, PA is actually having a pretty decent... Oh, she's got her eyes down here, and she's going to be able to take down Lelis. Dives that tower just a little bit. They do have the tombstone up, though. Ritsu trying to get these hits and needs just a little bit Strike. more damage. Can't rush. There it is. Oh. Okay. So you get a kill on the support, and you're giving a kill to Ritsu, and it's your core. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe not worry. I'm going to complete that uh, threads here. I love how, like, aggressive... Nice playing this top lane against 4DR. I feel like that's, you know, he just goes, puts out some Shikuchi damage, throws out those bugs, and then also just time lapse himself away. So just being as pesky as possible, making it very difficult for 4DR to get too close, like you said. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just that 
the cooldown on Arctic Burn the, in the first level is just too is too high. So he's gonna use it once, and then you have you can just be super aggressive against the Wyvern. Mm -hmm. They are getting close to level six though for the R. It's like rotation coming out the mid. They get the skewer back here. Eternal Envy coming for. They've got the battle hunger. They've got that shackle, and this is gonna be one dead. CC and C. Z Freak actually gonna get that kill. All right. One thing that I actually didn't mention is how much AOE lockdown they have on the side of complexity versus the PL. Right? You have RP plus call. That's BKB piercing lockdown for like seven seconds if they actually land uh, the first one to the on red two. Mm -hmm. so it's not gonna be an easy game for him even though he's having an okay lane here pretty much tied up in CS with the PL. Look at so much damage coming out from Limp just alone on the Stan King. He made his way. Sorry, I keep saying Stan King, man. <laughs> I'm so sorry guys. Please, you're throwing me off here, dude. I will get that though. Call comes out and it looks like Eternal Empty is gonna have to TP himself away. Should be able to make it out in time though. They actually dropped the tombstone for that as well. So good call on that. Very good engagement by him right there. Z Freak, he's got the hex, he's got that ether, and he's gonna follow up with a beautiful shackle and put a little damage over here on the 40 yard. They actually have the Winter's Curse though. Should be okay, does have the time lapse up should he need it. He still really wants this kill. The Arctic Burn gonna come out though. We'll be able to go put 4DR hiding out into the trees. Save really wants this, look at him. He's still waiting. Oh. He has the time lapse up. He, he figures maybe he can get a little bit more damage. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, and again we see uh, a build that uh, the 4DR actually did in, in another game. The Urn Weaver, apparently going for the, uh, for the uh, Spirit Vessel later on. It's pretty decent versus the Kanka, you know, having that Spirit Vessel after he bolts. It's going to be a lot of extra damage. And PA actually making this rotation up towards the top lane. I think she's had enough. There's just too many heroes down here. Having her a little bit nuts, so she'll go top, do some farming, and uh, maybe help try to get a kill. Already we see those Serpent Wards being used, and 4DR has to fly himself away. This will be the only one now here in the bottom lane. I'm not sure what he hopes to really achieve here. He needs definitely at least... Plus one, if not, plus a little bit more. But when you see the TP coming out here, Boat will land. Oh, it lands on two different people. CZ and C gets a double kill. Not like this. Making just wanted to help. Yeah. All right, it's going to be uh, pretty much a tower trade, but they did commit a surprise on the side of complexity. Oh. Can they? I don't think they have enough damage to take out Lamp. They don't have the lockdown either. Yeah, Lamp is level 10 already. Pretty well. Almost has Blink Dagger. It's going to be a great That's going to be huge once he gets that item. Yeah. Gimson gets dropped over in the mid lane. They want to try to get that tower. Is he free going to be able to do it? Throws out that hex here. Limp and Eternal Envy just going to try to chop down this tombstone. They do have a sentry over here, and so they can go and D ward. They also have tabs over here on Flea. He's trying to get himself back, but I don't think anyone actually has, like, mobile detection. We don't have any dust up and running, it looks like. Not yet, anyways. Yeah, it looks like Ritsu might be going for the Manta. Doesn't think that the uh, Diffusal Blade first item is going to be the, the answer. You know, having the, the spell for the Stifling Dagger, having the Manta dodge against the Call or the RP. I mean, he is a very uh, high-skilled player, so I s assume he probably knows the timing. Having that Manta on top of the Doppelganger might be clutch. If he actually gets a Manta dodge, it just changes the entire outcome of the fights. Absolutely. Zero zero seven here already has that uh, empowering. It looks like he might be going for the battlefield. He has a ring of health here. Not sure if he, if he maybe if he wants to go for maybe a vanguard. Pretty good versus the PL, you know the damage block. He might be go battlefield as well. Interesting. We got the phase boots over here on this winter wyvern. They have to be a little bit careful, right? Because there is the winter's curse. So Z Freak doesn't want to get a little too close to that PA in case she decides to drop it. But uh, it does. Hide herself over here into the trees. 40 are just going to hang out for a little bit. And we do have Lee making his way around. We'll immediately go into the Vendetta after seeing Lemp. Doesn't want to actually really be here at this time. Just wants to do a little scouting. Throw down some vision. And uh, do you see an invasion over here coming out? They've got their eyes over here onto Lelis. And Lemp, he's already here. He's going to help chop him down. And they'll give the kill to Lemp. Is that another double? How many double damage runes has he had? <laughs> this is at least now, right? the second one. At least yeah. the second. That's uh, very, very good for him. Still has that blink RP, was not forced to use it. Oh, it's just he might die here. He's trying, he's gonna throw out that oh. boat, try to get that buff up. We'll be able to run away though. There's, oh, never mind, J.O. 
at the last second from downtown. <laughs> yeah, that is so costly for Penex. He doesn't even have Chikomi DRP here. And oh, now if we're gonna find him in this, this might be so good for Limp if he can get a good RP now. Yeah, already see that PL's just Ritsu making his way back to the top. He says, all right, there is an invisible Magna somewhere nearby. I want nothing to do with this. Thank you. Okay. Oh, yeah, for now, I would say Complexity, they definitely have the advantage this game. The Magnus and the PA had good lanes. You have the, that Empower. The PL is farming okay, but I do think that like, if, this, if this PA has a free game, she is just stronger than the PL in the late game. One of the few heroes uh, that actually do as well. She has been feeling pretty really good, are they? There's the Arctic Burn coming out, though. CCNC coming around the corner. Oh, there's an RP just for CCNC, but they will be able to go land that curse. And comes the boat. Is going to be able to land, and they should be able to get the kill on the PA. She is out of here. The Skira comes out, though, from Limp. He wants nothing to do with this any longer. Yeah, and as you said, you know, as long as they time the boat perfectly, the Winter's Curse is a great setup, and they get it on two. Very good. Ooh, Flea was so close there. Did you see that? It did have a wand with 20 charges at least, but yeah. burning down pretty fast. Try to spike arrow base there to avoid some damage. Ritz is actually getting bullied here by Snay. Gonna be able to walk himself away. Don't have anyone else quite nearby to help lock him down at this time. Z Freak trying to set up here knows that there is a catapult, so if he can get a good uh, a good out in the tower, he's gonna do a lot. 4DR, very nicely positioned here. Has 4 points of the Arctic Burn. Very low cool. Oh, look at Limp though. Limp, he wants it. He oh. knows that there is a Wyvern hiding out over here. And there's gonna... Oh, he just skewers forward. He oh, finds no. it. Hex comes out. Shackle comes out as well. Dagger to the heart. The Dragon Slayer. Or Wyvern Slayer. I'm sorry. My bad. <laughs> I really like that uh, J.O. went for the Vanguard. You know, you don't see that every day. But not only it's great versus the PL. She already has the damage to farm. Now she, you know... Does, doesn't need lifesteal because of the damage block plus HP region. And uh, it's just going to keep on scaling. It's a pretty decent item here. Yeah, it's a very good draft having the uh, the Magnus, you know, give out the Empower sort of thing. And just Limp has been playing this so well anyways. Yeah. To, to make matters even more difficult for the side of Phoenix. Smoke gank though. Let's see if they can find something. They do draw the line there. There is uh, Shadow Shaman trying to push. Yeah, but if he tanks this gank, then it's... it's uh, it's it's fine. They really want this PA, right? They know that she's up here. Yeah. They've seen her pop up a couple times. They have vision. They do have vision. They actually pinged out that there was a ward there. Oh, the jump forward. They still know that she's there. Oh, J.O. Immediately going to get jumped here. They pop the shrine immediately. TP's coming out. They want to try to protect their PA. Oh, Thank you. here, though. They didn't land it. And there's going to be the TP coming out. They'll just cancel it out. They'll get fully here. Possibly as they chase after him. There's a little bit more of an altercation going on over here. Looks like CCNC in a lot of trouble. Battle Hunger comes out. Will be able to land a Winter's Curse, but they don't save him in time. But they will get the kill over onto Flea. And Ritsu gonna take uh, take down one of their towers while all that's going on. Oh, look at the damage coming out from J.O. He's not willing to give up Ritsu just yet. He's gonna be laying forward. He's a little bit more damage. That Soul Rip keeping him alive just a bit longer, but not gonna be able to do it. And he's just gonna keep on going. J.O.'s having a good time. Don't stop him now. Oh, Lelis, you are not getting away from that. All right. Now <laughs> You know, we were saying that the PA might win the late game versus the PL, but it doesn't game. look good. like they hit it. That PA is just going ham right now. Oh, 4DR, 4DR, trying to hide himself into the trees. Immediately, time lapse comes out. Weaver just going to walk away. Scooty booty shikuchi. You have this shadow blade over here on CCNC, though. We do have detection. Freak. There it is. There's the X coming out here. He's going to go get the Shackle. Who is just actually drag him back? No, but there's going to be a boat coming in. It's got their names on it. They'll take down Z Freak. Looks like they're going to be able to grab NV2. And uh, looks like CCNC trying to run himself away with that battle hunger. Somehow NV's still alive. Oh, there's an urge charge. That's going to cause some problems for him. I believe that should be enough to take him down. And they get another kill over here. They take down the Winter Wyvern. And they're still on the hunt over here. This PA, you cannot stop her. They use the reverse polarity and they say, you're not getting out today, Phantom Lancer. You belong to me. No hesitation by Limp. And he just does Look at him go. Look at them go. They just, they just keep running, Bowie. <laughs> That's the power of PA plus Viver. You just have so much mobility. And, you know, empowering those two heroes. I think he's dead, actually. He's dead. He's so dead. He is 
dead yesterday. <laughs> you tried to taunt, you know. So, you know, try to have a good time here. Look at yeah. the damage on Jail. Oh, they can Roche. Good. Like, they have the minus armor from the Weaver. They have this insanely farm PA. I guess the only reason they're not going for it is that the Kunkar is going to be alive and he has uh, that bolt. Oh, please. they use the wards. They trap him in there with the shackle. And they're just going to let Snay murder him. They might actually get a kill over here on Z Freak, though. Looks like it's going to be pretty good. Yeah, they'll find that opening. And CCNC also making his way down immediately goes back to Shadow Blade after the Battle Hunker gets placed on him. I mean, it's decent. They did force the, the wards. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just support. And uh, I think they're trying... Uh, maybe if the Winter Wyvern gets strong enough, uh, or maybe an item uh, that allows for the archer to not get burst at the start, because it looks like he's being chased. Uh, he only has three deaths, but it just looks like every time someone is chasing him. If he can get a Blink Dagger so he can counter-initiate the PA jump or the RP, I do think they do have a chance because he has a Meme Hammer now. Right. And that Meteor Hammer with the Winter's Curse is so much lockdown, it definitely allows them to, to, to kill anyone. But, yeah, it's gonna... It's going to need a blink dagger on that wyvern until it's going to be reliable for now it's just a funny item that also pushes waves which is something you know it's always good to have and it's tough right when you're playing the winter wyvern because you need to have that mobility but like you said on the enemy team you've got so many heroes that have great mobility because usually you know as wyvern you want to sit a little bit further back you want to make sure that you know someone is actually in the front lines so that way you can go and get a good winter's curse you can kind of sit back throw out the arch burn if necessary um, but when you have heroes that can make these jumps, like you've got the Magnus, you've got the PA, you've got, you know, all of these heroes, it, it makes your life so much more difficult. Yeah. And it just feels like constantly, too, right? Snake King is just hunting him relentlessly. Definitely. Although, Z Freak needs to be a little careful here. There's a Nyx Assassin on the prowl. Okay. Mm, they ping it out. They want him. Arctic Burn slowing down Z Freak just a little bit. Flea coming around the corner. He's looking for that opening. Doesn't have the vendetta. Yeah. Might be able to cancel that TP though if the freak tries to get out, but they actually just cannot find him. It's a slippery little shaman over here. He is fine. Looks like we might have a problem though here with the undying. Oh, he actually misses the skewer here over on Zalelas. And now, oh, PA actually, I, I really like this, you know, gets the Vanguard first, so they know they cannot burst the PA, gets the Battle Fury later. There is so much damage coming from this PA now, Moxie. You have, what, this is almost 80% cleave. Actually, it's 100% cleave. It is a, a lot of cleave, and you're going to get the tri uh, triple stifling dagger at level 20. That PL is not going to be happy. It's going to be forced to go for defensive items, maybe a heart, and even then, like, this, you're going to see, it's just out of this world how much damage that talent does. And you're going Rush. I mean, can they really contest this? They've got wards in the pit. You've got a Magnus that's got RP up. I don't think you go anywhere near this right now. Uh, I think if Maybe you're prepared, boat. you can because Maybe. you have Tombstone Bolt, but not, not right now. No, it's, it's gone too fast, too. Yeah. This PA. Limp. Chasing. Oh, he finds Ritsu over here in the corner. Ooh. He's going to ping it out. There's going to be the Weaver following. Does go. Tries to double away. Go for the RP. And that's just a dead Ritsu. Okay. They did kill the Shaman top. It looks like they might be able to get a tower here with that Mithir Hammer from yep. 4DR. Still, you're trading a Shaman for a PL. <laughs> Not the trade that you want, right? No. They also missed this uh, dewarding over here too, so those are easy, easy wards here for Z Freak to uh, take down, right? Yeah. Uh, one thing they d they do have on the side of pain is the cleave coming from the Kanka. As long as he can hit other targets, the PA uh, the PA cannot dodge that, mm -hmm. and it's also damage that doesn't care about armor. But I think they're gonna need a, f a you know a stronger conquer for that, and they're gonna need more damage besides that. So maybe that Winter's Curse lockdown with the Meteor Hammer maybe allows them to. But you know the BKB is already getting done for Jo. I know that's so scary. How do you stop this PA when she? Because not only will she have the BKB, she's also got an Aegis right now. It's kind of discouraging them from trying to chase after anyone really on the side of complexity at this time. Oh, we've got some movement here in the jungle. Looks like Lelis and for a little trouble goes. He pops that shrine. He's going to try to get himself away, but I don't think he can escape his fate here. Yeah, Snake going to be able to take him down. They're going to be able to take down this uh, tombstone as well. 
and probably try to go for another little push. Yeah, look at this PA. She's just running full tilt over here. Spots a CC and C. We'll land that torrent, though. We'll have RP up for another 20-something seconds. Uh, I do like since this build, you know, getting the raw plate mail straight up into BKB just needs the armor. It is a value slot that he can uh, that he can have. Mm -hmm. But still, the damage problem. Oh. Ooh, Envy! Hello. You saw him underneath that sentry where it's gonna try to draw him back. And comes Snake King. Wants to play. Little bug on bug action here. Nice spike carapace. Buys him some more time. Z Freak, though, hot on his heels. He's looking. He's gonna be able to use that Ether Shock and take him out. Um, so, yeah, Ritsu getting closer to that Manta. Uh, I just. I struggle to see what Pain X, can, what, what's their power spike. I think the way they win this game is with good high ground defenses. I don't think they really have an item or something that's going to change the outcome of this game. It's most likely complex this game to lose at this point. Um, I guess that Winter's Curse with the Meteor Hammer might be uh, what they need, but they don't really have an opening. The Blink Dagger is even going Blink. He's going for a Crimson Guard, actually, so... Yeah, I mean, he does have the Aether Lens, so he's gonna have a little extra... Yes. ...reach on that, at least. And, like, does Wes put the talent here? Uh, no, we don't have a... We don't have a... The Night Vision does range, help, though. Range night. Yeah, the Night Vision is good, definitely. EKB's completed, though, over here on Jaya. This oh is boy. a very terrifying kind of assassin. Hasn't revealed itself just yet, too. There's the Wyvern sitting down here. But, uh... Is coming out to her very, very shortly, so... Yeah, I think this is their timing. The only thing that is that they lack is the level 20 talent, but at this stage, their PA is so much stronger than the, the PL, because this is a game where the PL needs to be ahead to be even. So considering that the PA is already ahead in net worth, uh, she doesn't even need that level 20 talent. It's just a plus. They're so close to 4 DR right now. Look at them. Mm -hmm. This is the time for that curse. Yeah, there it is. They jump forward, but it doesn't matter. Oh. They pop that link. Will be able to go hold down the Winter Wyvern, take her down. Tombstone gets dropped here, but again, they have the Sages. They have so much damage now. Looks like Lela's trying to run himself out. They go for the RP, and <laughs> they don't really manage to do too, too much with this. There's going to be the Yules coming out by a more time against the boat. Haven't even popped that BKB yet. They're just chasing them down. It's a slaughter fest, boy. Look at this. A jump for it over onto CC and C. He's trying to get out. He's not going to be able to do it. They have that Ether Shock. Did get a buyback during that. Came out from the Undying, but again, they use that BKB. They still have an Aegis. They're feeling just so fine right now. Yeah, they are. Uh, and again, right, the the fact that it's so hard for 4 yard to get a Winter's Curse just makes the ga their game super hard. I like the idea of the pick. It just looks like because they lost, I guess they didn't win their lanes as much as they wanted to, uh, the Wyvern's just been playing from behind the entire game. And I guess kind of similar to the Piao. You just need to be slightly ahead for it to be useful or to be very effective. And they just never really had the chance. Uh, one thing we might see is some, you know, cheeky spike hair pace plays when PA gets a crit. You know, that's <laughs> right. right that's <laughs> that is like a very the stretching very far, but it can happen. You do have like a 75% spike hair pace tail in a level 20, so maybe hopefully can hope for that. You're gonna reflect a lot of extra damage back to the PA. Look at Ritsu, he just cannot find any place to farm. Whenever he shows up on the map, there is someone hunting him. Yeah. He's spending some alone time in the trees thinking about his life choices <laughs> right now. Uh, did finish up that Manta, though. He's going to be having that heart soon. So, you know, he's still, you know, finding the farm. It's pretty difficult, especially with the way that uh, Cole is just running at them. Oh, no. Limp comes forward. They get the call. They get an X as well. Limp just kind of running around in circles. They do have that dust. Still have their eyes over here on CC and C. There's going to be the Spike Carapace come out. Nice Winter's Curse. They've got the BKB, though, up and running over here. Onto this Phantom Assassin. Oh, CC and C, why did you even just show your face there, friend? My goodness, I guess that Sentry Ward did give him away anyways. Weaver still chasing here. Oh, the Blink Forward doesn't look like it's going to connect over onto Ristu. That's a nice play, and they will be able to take down the as They go for the RP play here. Uh, they do cancel it out, though. Another Dagger getting thrown out over here on Fleet. Got to be careful with that Courier here. Spirit Lance gets thrown out over onto Limp. But they don't have their Kunga, they don't have the Undying. They did lose Envy during that. All right. Uh, yeah, they, they do hold. 
uh, the good advantage still piling up against the side of Pain X. The Phantom Blaster is getting closer to, to the heart. But, it, you know, for now, the only thing that 4DR can do is just Winter's Curse the BKB PA and just uh, chew through that uh, BKB duration. This is a, uh, what, 8 it's second like a BKB? It's like a desperation tactic, yeah, right? Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. You just try to buy time, you just retreat, you know that like the real damage comes from the PA, so you buy what five seconds and you just try to get out. Four point seventy five. And uh, hopefully when the PL is bigger and when the BKB is five seconds, you might be able to take the fight. They are like they're playing for for the long run here on side of Pain Axe. I think they need maybe thirty minutes. So that this game is even, maybe PA falls off. Right now, they don't really have any means. Look at the creep wave. Like, the way <laughs> J.O. clears creep waves right now is... Staggers just are just absolutely insane, like you said. Yeah. Just working on that Abyssal Blade, too. What we have coming out of the Basher. Yeah, we got the Basher coming out for J.O. now. Nice. Envy needs to be a little bit careful here. He's going to go and drag Lelis along with him. He's going to go grab himself that rune. Double damage rune is available top, though. Since he's looking at it. He's looking at it. I don't know. He's feeling a little bit nervous, I'm sure. Nope. We'll be able to grab it in time. Max getting pinged out here. They managed to take down that. Oh, they have a gem. Oh, goodness. They could have possibly initiated over onto the Kunko, but I think they don't see everyone else, and uh, it's making them a little bit worried here. Yeah, there's going to be Weaver. Making his way over. I do like Bane's position, you know. Look at the centers. They have like three centers around for the R. And he's like, okay, I'm safe here. We yeah. might be able to get out. Oh, Yos comes out. We'll be able to go. Hopefully right back in again. But again, J.O. just running his face first in here. Wants to take down CC and see. They get a nice call over here with the Hex. They'll follow up. And there's a Winter's Curse getting used over here. But it doesn't do much of anything but hold down that Magnus. And he's going to get the RP off over here onto CC and see. Look at this damage coming out from J.O. It's Monster Kill. They get the kill over on the Dark Courier too. And they'll jump forward. Oh, Envy, what a call. Where's the rest of your team? They're going to back you up. No problem. Godlike coming through. V2 trying to run himself out. Those Shackles, though, just push him right back into the base. He is out of here. The buyback comes out from the Nyx Assassin. We'll go and use that Carapist. A little bit of cheeky play, but you know, J.O. says, I don't care about that. I want that triple kill. This is a beautiful call coming out from Envy earlier, and they're just going to rip through the towers. It's the GG. Yeah, their power spike was way too strong for them to handle. Uh, you know, kind of a cheeky play. You don't see PA, you're drafting PA, you're like, all right, we ban all the counters. There's no way, but with the PA plus Magnus, they just take it super easily. I mean, props to Lamp. I really think that a lot of the times you see the Magnus, and he just doesn't win his lane as hard. He doesn't get the many levels, so the PA actually struggles to uh, to grow. But in this game, with the item build that they went and uh, the way that Lamp just, I won't, I won't say destroyed, but I think he won the lane harder than the usual player, mm -hmm. and it just allowed them to catapult their uh, slight early game advantage to what we saw here. It's just Yeah, no, I mean, the fact that they, they picked up that Phantom Assassin and they were able to also put the Empower on her, she got a pretty fast Battle Fury on top of everything else, and then they just, uh, the momentum that they get with this particular lineup, and again, this is not their actual position one, right? This, yeah. is, this is their stand-in. Like, you can only imagine what it's going to be like when they do get that, that other player that they really, you know, want to have on there, but just... They're playing so well together. Definitely. They're definitely like that synergy's there. And, you know, I feel like, you know, Pain X, it was a little bit of a problem with that Winter Wyvern. I feel like the Wyvern just didn't have the mobility to kind of move around, get things done. We did see, almost got that curse off over onto the Weaver, but didn't see that they had a Lincolns and unfortunately mm -hmm. kind of botched that attempt. So. Yeah, and that's one of the problems when you know first phase or PL like this. It, it You have to when you want to get it, but it's also going to get counter. They mm -hmm. had the time, they get the heroes. Yeah. All right, well, you know, it is a best of five, so there is a chance still for Panax to get into this. They already had won one game because they had the upper bracket advantage, so that is a two to nothing. So this next game could be a victory for Complexity, or we could start to see Panax come back into it. So Definitely. Definitely stick around. You don't want to miss this. So we'll be right back. <laughs> ESL One Hamburg is brought to you in part by Intel. Mercedes-Benz, Vodafone, DHL, Alienware, Logitech G, 